Listen, all you New Yorkers, there's a rumor going round that some of you good people want to leave this town. But you'd better consult with me before you go. Yeah? Because I've been to all those places, and I know. Hollywood? Hollywood's got movie stars and movie czars and cocktail bars and shiny cars and a wonderful climate, they say. But it hasn't got the handy subway trains. You seldom find a taxi when it rains. That's why New York's my home. Make your California New York's my home sweet home. So save your time and trouble. Stay right there. Well, I, I guess that's it. You're going back tomorrow. I can't leave you. I just can't. Stephen, look. New York gave us two wonderful days, and we should say thank you and run just as fast as we can. We have to come down to Earth sometime. Happy man and the world. 
in summer. All the people look so happy down here. Everybody seems to bring their nicest dreams to the village for all to see. Because the village has castles in the air, the rainbow's head. My mom, she thought I was gonna admit that I was gay. When I, when I told her that I had something to talk to her about, she, um, actually when I told her I was transgendered, she looked at me and she went, what? Transgendered? She kind of thought of Rocky Horror Picture Show when I told her that. I was actually um, on my way to my uh, dance recital. Um, your dance recital, worst time to do it, I swear. We were in the car and I was like, hey mom, do you know what transgender means? And I've been doing research for about a year now before I decided to come out. And, you know, really know what I'm getting myself into. And I said, well, I think that's what I am. I think I'm transgender. And she didn't say anything, she was just silent. At first she didn't believe me, um, but I think she, she actually looked into my eyes and she realized how hurt I was. She's like, why would you want to live a life like this? I mean, it's hard. I said, there's no other way and you don't know. I said, you know, I tried to kill myself three nights ago. And that was just a turning point. Like, oh my God, this is real. I don't want to bury my dead child. I'd rather have you as a son than dead. Hi, I'm uh, doing this video documentation of my transition. I want her full support doing it. I finally got my hair cut. Yes. She said she'd let me get top surgery done. My first down teeth. So some changes that I've noticed is my voice has dropped. I've been on testosterone for about a month and a half now. I see it right in here, like my mustache. And I'm getting acne everywhere on my face. I got one right here on my lip. I've gotten taller. Um, I got chest hair. I shaved. Just got out of the surgery. I have changed as a person emotionally, physically, spiritually, everything. You know, everything about me has changed and I love it. I was at a transgender equality meeting 
and she walked in and I my, had to pick my jaw up off the ground and we just hit it off from there. It's actually a, a lot more common thing than people think that two transgenders dating. Uh, it was pretty unique that we actually were out and about about it. Especially we were young. As, we were young yeah. together, transgender. Plus, we were in the middle of a very conservative area. And a rare we thing to see down Very there. rare thing to see a transgendered period down in the Bible Belt, let alone uh, the buckle itself. No one knew what I was going through. I had like an un, unwanted superpower of being invisible because you feel like I'd ask somebody something and they'd look at me and turn around like I didn't ask them anything. The kids reacted how many would expect. They spat at me, they talked to me, they laughed at me, they pushed me, they shoved me. I had transitioned from my old self in the same school to Katie and managed to survive the very first day of my beginning semester. I dropped out. I was bullied and they finally uh, asked me to leave. I started to think that why am, why am I cursed to live, to be like this, living day to day, hating myself. However, I, I, I realized that this wasn't a curse. This was a blessing. This was, you know, it, it turned me to some, someone who was scared and someone who was lonely to someone who was strong and independent and beautiful. And it, it taught me to treat people right and not be afraid. You have this new, like, love for life. You want to make something of yourself because you struggled so hard to survive. I got up my courage and I went to school the very first day of the second semester of my junior year. And it was the same way as it was the first day of the last semester. People taunted me and laughed at me and pointed at me, but I survived the first day and then the second day and then the third day and eventually it just got easier. It just became natural after a while. The experiences I went through made me into the guy I am today. And I think that's the best thing about this is I am the man I want to be. You define yourself. I'm Katie. That's all it is. I I was not popular in high school by any means, and I didn't have, um, you know, like a a great time. <laughs> it's just a lot of, of talking about yourself and about your story and, and telling the same story over and over again in different ways to different people until you know it so well. And I feel like through that I've, I know myself so much better and I feel so much more capable of expressing that. I decided at 14, 15 years old that I, I wanted to have a sex change. And I had the chance to have very open-minded parents, so I told them about it, and they're amazing with me. They took me to the doctors and, and everything, because we all knew that um, earliest we're gonna do it, better I will look, and better it's gonna be for me. So I did the entire thing until 18, and then at 18, the legal age, I did the surgery. It's not a transvestite, which I think is a popular belief. I'm not a man. I wake up as a woman and I go to work as a woman. I don't dress up and create this whole illusion. I had a, uh, I had a mohawk, um, I pierced my lips. I, um, I rebelled a little bit, I guess, but I was trying to figure out how I wanted to present myself. I started dressing only men's clothes, started wearing cologne for the first time as opposed to perfume. For the first year, I was just like a total bitch all the time, and like <laughs> cried all the time, and like. My life has always been explaining who I am or why I am. Um, and for me, like growing up, when kids would ask, like, well, why are your parents white? I'd just be like, well, why are yours black? Or like, why? It's just like, that's all I'd ever known. And um, so it wasn't something that ever bothered me. Questions like that are things that other people wonder. I, I have always, and at least I've, I had the support that I always needed that whatever I felt that I was, I could be. There was no feeling actually, it was just my, my body changing, you know, and I felt the hormonal levels being affected by, by the medicine and I just felt that it was going in a feminine direction. You're bullied all your life um, and because you, for being effeminate and being girly, 
So when you finally make this tough decision of going through your transition, then you're bullied and people call you a man. But it's um, something that, again, that you kind of have to reach a place that you like yourself for who you are that, um, and not be affected by it. There were always just certain things different about me. I started dancing when I was seven. I was going to a professional ballet academy from when I was 10 until I was 12. They wanted me to be a boy dancer and I wanted to be a ballerina, so that just didn't really work out. I'm pretty bad at picking up if somebody is interested in me. I'm not really good at flirting myself, but I also think it's kind of awkward when somebody tries to flirt with me and tries to sort of like put the moves on me. I'm just not really good at that. I've dated a few guys who were absolutely fine with everything, and I've also dated some guys who were having a little bit more, you know, of a hard time. I'm a full-time student, and then I'm also working as a model. I write for an online magazine in Holland, and then I also work as a DJ. I really love pop music. I love Beyonce, and it's kind of cool to see someone who is so overly in control, you know? I really admire them because I would love to be that way, but I'm just not. I just learned how to deal with the chaos that is me on certain areas in my life where it would cause problems. The perfect day for me is about the same mind state. And that is feeling safe and feeling relaxed. There it was, I saw what I shall never forget and never retrieve. Monstrous and beautiful to human eyes, hard to believe. He lay, yet there he lay, asleep on the moss, his head on his polished cleft small ebony hooves, the child of the doe, the dappled child of the deer. Surely, his mother had never said, lie here till I return, so spotty and plain to see, on the green moss lay he. His eyes had opened. He considered me. I would have given more than I care to say to thrifty ears, might I have had him for my friend, one moment only of that forest day. Might I have had the acceptance, not the love of those clear eyes. Might I have been for him the bough above, or the root beneath his forest bed, a part of the forest, seen without surprise. Was it alarm, or was it the wind of my fear lest he depart, that jerked him to his jointy knees and sent him crashing off, leaping and stumbling on his new legs? between the stems of the white trees. I came up with a couple of friends of mine from school um, to uh, visit uh, New York. Uh, ran into a couple of drag queens at the Sloan House Y. Uh, one was called Betty Davis and the other was called Estelle. They were from Pittsburgh and they were in New York because they're going to go to Manhattan Center, which is across the street from the Sloan House Y, for a huge drag ball. Do you remember the... Uh, in the condo? In the, in the condo, yeah. yeah. The shelf unit that we turned into rooms of a Barbie house. Yeah. With, a, like, wallpaper. 
Like, it's I think really cool. It was hard for me because it was my only child. Uh, I mean, I had three girls and only one boy, boy <laughs> you know? So yeah. it was very difficult because I tried a lot to get my boy, you know? But I accepted him because he's mine and I love him, you know? So I had to accept him. David has been with me through, I, I don't know how many friends I can count who have been with me through so much and see me be so different and transform as much as David has. Once you went away to college, I think that we kind of, um, like the distance kind of made us, brought us together. So it was just like kind of, the, like your absence, I guess, was, it made me take notice of it. And I just, I guess I value your time more now, so. Thank you. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what I would be doing about my dad. I don't know where I would, I don't think I would be here um, if, if he weren't as supportive as he is. Manhattan Center, which still exists, was packed and uh, the show paid to get in. And we sat up in the balcony and I looked at this thing and I said, gentlemen, we have found our industry. My, um, my schoolmates were uh, perhaps less intrigued but as far as I was concerned, it was as clear as Easter bells that we had run across something yeah, just phenomenal. Your mind is open. It's a very enriching experience in a certain sense because sure. you're meeting people who you ordinarily have blocked out of your vision. They didn't exist, they were invisible. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to know them. Yeah. And suddenly you find, hey, wait a minute, there's, there's something else besides gender in this world. There is a practical, maybe a little bit like uh, getting used to part. But there is another part which is it's very normal. I, I've, I've seen her since the beginning and she was always creative and she was always dancing and she was always dressing up and, uh, and I myself as well when I was young. So for me it's in a way, I don't know, it, it just makes sense. You just know. Well, I felt I first felt different. Um, I think when I was maybe five or six, um, when you're really like starting to understand that there's a difference between girls and boys, and that you're not the same. And I did tell my parent, a parent, and it was met with a lot of um, anger and negativity. Um, so I forgot about it and just let it alone. I just wanted to be a girl, and how I behaved was frowned upon um, at home and outside home. So very early on, um, I was confused. Hey, Graham! Hi, lad. How many other people in the world have green hair? You have what, lad? Green hair! In high school, I um, identified uh, as gay. Um, I never really wanted to use the word lesbian because I knew that I didn't identify fully as a girl, uh, so that didn't feel appropriate. People that don't understand, they will just say, oh, you're just a lesbian that's dressing up like a guy. I No, I'm not dressing up. It's not what's on the outside. It's on the inside that I feel male. People at school were like, oh, your voice is like the voice as a girl, no, no, no. 
They thought that they were mean to me, but I loved it to hear it <laughs> because I knew I was going to be a woman anyways. I would say, oh, I'm not a ma'am. I'm actually a guy. And I had people actually come back to me, which seems really crazy, come back to me and say, no, you're a lady or like you're a dickless lady and scream at me in the middle of the street. Everybody thought it was a phase, but I just knew that I felt different on the inside. down to your hair, lad. It turned green. All by itself. All by itself. We all Googled, I guess, <laughs> so we learned a few stuff. It was like a conversation I didn't really want to have, and she, um, she, yeah, she like, she knew. When she came out to me, uh, it made a lot more sense. We were always very open, and David has always been someone that I could express myself to freely and not feel judged. You know, I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be able to transition. I wouldn't, you know, when I don't have support, you know, I don't have friends and things like that. When I was going through things, the only person I could talk to or the only thing I could talk to was God. So I have to pray. That's all, that's all I had. You lose a lot of um, friends and family. It's a given. So I was prepared for it. Yeah, my father was like, initially it's like change your last name. Um, you're not my daughter, and that was pretty, it was hard to hear from my dad, who I really love a lot. I really didn't think about it. I just said, if that's what you want, that's perfectly all right with me. At first they were like, um, scared because they wanted to protect me because we were living in the small village, as we said, and then I have a smaller sister. Um, and they wanted to protect her as well. They've been very, uh, not only supportive, but very interested. Wanting to understand, well, what does that mean? Whatever we can do to help, we do. At the end of the day, my parents, when they accepted it and we talked about it, they actually did like a kind of a reception, invite all the family to come and then introduce myself. So you have to know that it's going to be Ines now. If she comes to me and says uh, there's something I want to discuss with her, I absolutely discuss it with her. I tell her, like, my personal life, dating, I, you know, tell her everything. Some of my other friends were a little apprehensive because they didn't understand, but over time, they, they started to see the kind of woman that I was becoming. I mean, the woman that I always was, but physically becoming. Football, electric trains, you know, I was so excited to have uh, a son. It certainly um, was fine, you know, it was uh, somewhat adjusting, but it was fine because I love him and her very much. Loved him then, <laughs> love her now. I basically demanded my family to accept me, but they also did accept me, you know? So you could demand something and not receive it, but I, they did accept me. My father, my mother, my sisters. This exchange for me was, um, was just normal. And then she became like, I, I always call her, she's a miracle to me. It is the boy with the green hair. We were waiting for you. You mean I was supposed to come? We were hoping you would. What for? Your green hair is very beautiful. Beautiful? Yes. Green is the color of spring. It means hope. This is what, it's not, it's something that I had to be. It's something that I had to be. The thing for me that's important now is that emotionally I know where I am and where I want to be. When I left the hospital, I was in Thailand and I was by myself and um, they released me the sixth day, and I remember I walked out of the hospital and I had a very, very, <laughs> very cute outfit on, and I just felt really free and, um, and happy, even though obviously I was in some sort of physical pain. I'm so much more comfortable with myself now, and I'm so much happier. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I'm okay. At the end of the day, you cannot lie to yourself. You are who you are. I want to be loved for the way I am. I want the boy, my next boyfriend, to know and to love me. And I can even, like, I, I, I even, I want to talk about it. Everybody as human beings, we all have tough experiences, maybe some harder than others. So um, 
you sort of cannot, it will, you'll victimize yourself if you hold on to your past. What I have is right now, and what I do right now creates my future. The kids have always been fabulous. The thing, that, the thing that's different here is the fact that they're being recognized. I just want to say that I think uh, the environment and the feeling that was made here is really beautiful. Um, seeing everybody throughout the whole process and especially this morning um, being so comfortable um, shooting how we were, I think um, trans people historically live in um, feelings of shame and hatred of our body and seeing everybody so happy and comfortable um, I think was really powerful and it was a really beautiful thing. So thank you. Bravo. It's nice to have known you. When my hair grows back, it's gonna grow back green. Chip, chip, my little horse. Chip, chip again, sir. How many miles to Dublin town? Four score and ten, sir. Chip, chip, my, my little, little horse. horse. Chip, chip again, again sir. Can I get there every candlelight? He can and back again, sir. Oh, chip, chip, a little horse. Chip, chip again, sir. How many miles to Dublin Town? Four score and ten, sir. Chip, chip, a little horse. Chip, chip again, sir. Can I get there every candlelight? He can and back again, sir. It made a wonderful picture. A beautiful girl in a men's bar, completely captivating all the occupants, myself very much included. I was hoping she'd sing again, and she did. This time, directly to me. If the dreams you dream aren't coming true And happiness seems overdue tell you what I'll do. I'll make a happiness cocktail just for you. What's your name? Julie. What's your name? Stephen. Nice to know you, Julie. Nice to know you, too. It could only happen. 